I've just got myself a little bit crossed up on this muddy hill here, but I'm thinking if I just hook up the winch to this tree here, I should be able to just pull myself right out. I tell you what though, there's nothing funner than trying to pull a winch rope up a muddy hill. Well, I've got the winch all set up, so we should be out in a jiffy. Whoa! Far out, the winch rope just broke. Far out, that's nuts. Well, that wasn't exactly the plan, but maybe I'll show you guys how to splice two pieces of winch rope back together if you ever break your winch rope out on the trail. Let's do it. So what do you actually need to splice your winch rope back together? Well, there's a couple of things, but if you ask me, these are basics that you should always carry in your four wheel drive, no matter what you're doing. Some fencing wire. This is two meters of fencing wire, bent nice and sharply in the center, and then just straightened out. Cable ties are always good to have some electrical tape, but you can use whatever tape you've got with you at the time, a sharp knife of some description, and the optional extras that are really good to have, but you can't really expect everybody to carry a measuring tape with them, a measuring tape and a paint pen or marker of some kind. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually cut the winch rope nice and square and figure out where the last point that we can really cut it is, where the rope's not all been mangled up. All right, well, I reckon I won't be able to save this tail here, so I'm just gonna cut it about there. But what I'm gonna do is get my electrical tape and wrap it around and then cut it on the electrical tape at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna do that on both pieces of rope. So I've taped up where I'm gonna cut it. Now I'm just gonna cut it at a 45 degree angle, just like that. There we go, so now we've got two good ends and the rope is in good condition either side of where we've cut. So we've laid the ropes next to each other, the ends are at the same spot. And what we need to do now is mark two lines on the rope. Now if you don't have a marker, you're just gonna have to do the best you can. So this mark here needs to be 72 times the diameter of the rope. So most four wheel drive cables are 10 mil, so let's go for 720. Again, if you don't have a measuring tape, we're just gonna have to guess. So instead of guessing, I'm just gonna go way overkill and let's go, well, that's about a meter there. So we're gonna bury about a meter, I reckon. Okay, so we've got our two marks and now we can virtually start using our fencing wire to do its thing. So what I'm gonna do is grab one of the winch ropes, any of the winch ropes, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna get my fencing wire. Now I know this fencing wire is about a meter long. So I'm gonna go Jump over the rope. Hey, I'm skipping. Where's my mark? Where's the mark? Where's the mark? Where's the mark? Where are you? There it is. So this is about a meter long, so I'm probably gonna go another half a meter from there. And what I'm gonna do with this rope, all you need to do is push it together and then it opens right up. I'll just show you close up. All you need to do is push it together and it just opens right up. So once it's opened right up, all you need to do is just feed the end of the fencing wire inside. Now, the reason the fencing wire is bent is because Dyneema hates sharp edges. It really does not like sharp edges. It'll catch on any little sharp edge that it can find. So having a smooth corner like that isn't gonna catch on anything. So about a meter and a half away from the second mark, I've opened up the Dyneema. Now what I'm gonna do is actually feed this end through until we get to the second mark. Just push the Dyneema apart as you're feeding the fencing wire through and you can just bunch it up as you're going. If your winch rope has been used a lot, your dynamo is gonna be really stiff. And we're just gonna push it apart where the mark is and just come out the mark virtually with the fence, end of the fencing wire. So there's our mark there and we've just poked through with the fencing wire like that. So now all we need to do is get our end here and virtually tape the fencing wire to the end and just pull it through. It's pretty simple. Now when you're taping this up, make sure there's no sharp edges because Dyneema will even catch on the tape. That's how much this stuff loves to catch on things. So try and make it all nice and smooth. Okay, so now all we need to do is virtually just pull the fencing wire and let the other piece of Dyneema just go inside this piece of Dyneema until it pops out the other end. And then we just gotta keep pulling it through until we get to the second mark on this piece of rope. Awesome stuff. Now just under this bit of tape that's holding the fencing wire onto the piece of Dyneema. Okay, so now that we've done that, we just need to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So this is the other piece of Dyneema. So I'm just gonna go about one and a half meters away from where the ropes are joining 
and just feed this through all over again. If it ever does happen to you that your winch breaks, there might be another way for you to get out of the situation that you're in using recovery tracks or something else. So I'm just showing you guys what you can do if the winch is your only way out. Like if you're so stuck, you're by yourself and the only way you're getting out is with the winch, this is what you can do. Otherwise, it might not be worth the time fixing your rope, doing all this if you can just get out using a different method. What we're doing today is a berry splice, but um, there are other splices out there. The reason I'm showing you guys this one is because this one's the easiest to remember and the easiest to do on the side of the track. All the others are a little bit more involved and you kind of really have to know what you're doing to get it right. This one, pretty much anybody can do. Even me. Okay, so now we've pushed the fencing wire through all the way up to the mark on this rope. And now all we need to do is get the other tail, attach it to the fencing wire again and just pull it all the way back through. And again, just make sure that there's no sharp edges when you're taping it because otherwise it'll just catch on the dynema inside the rope. Okay, awesome stuff. So that's taped up. So now all we need to do is just spread the dynema a little bit so it can work its way in and then just pull it through. So we end up with this little loop here. So I'm just going to pull this rope through here like that and then grab the other one and just pull it through like that as well. So what you end up with now is this, what looks like a snake that's eating another snake pretty much. So where the two ropes join, what you want to do is just pull the ends through and make sure that it's nice and bunched up in the center here and do the same thing with the other one. Just make sure it's nice and bunched up in the center. So where the two ropes join, what you want to do is you want to just hold it nice and firmly and just pull the rope back on each side. So I'm using this cable tie here just to hold the two ropes together. Now, ideally, if you wanted to do a permanent fix, you would just do some stitching in both sides of the cable. And all that does is it holds it when there's no load on the cable. Because when there's load on the cable, both cables actually constrict around each other and hold each other. So the only time these can separate is when there's no load or really low load on the cable. So if you wanted to fix it permanently, you just got to do some stitching and there's plenty of videos about how to do that. But today we're assuming that you don't have what you need to do the stitching. So we're just going to use a cable tie just to hold it together. Now I'm just going to grab the center of the rope here where I've got my cable tie. And what you want to do is just apply a nice firm pressure and virtually just pull the outer rope down onto the inner rope, just nice and tight, as firmly as you can. And just you work, work your way down both ropes. They call this milking the sheath. Make sure that cable tie is nice and firm because that's what's holding the two ropes from separating when there's no load on it. Now what you'll see here is the ends are gonna start disappearing into the rope. That's exactly what you want to happen. And just like that, we've fixed our winch rope. So it's pretty easy, right? Now let's get ourselves out of this situation. Now, just one other thing that's probably worth mentioning. If you actually manage to break a winch rope, maybe you should have a look at the situation and just see if you can remove some friction, remove some mud, some sand, some rocks from in front of the tires or whatever you're hung up on, just to see if you can put less stress on the whole system. But let's get out of this situation. I'll tell you guys what, I'm getting pretty over filming on this muddy hill, like everything's in mud, my shoes are slipping and sliding all over the shop. If your winch line breaks very close to the end of the rope, you might actually be better off just splicing a new eye through the thimble. So all you gotta do there is take the old thimble off and then get your winch rope, cut the end, and virtually we just do the same thing again as we did last time, except this time I'm actually gonna measure it properly. 72 times by 12, 864. Now I'm just gonna go a bit overkill and I'm actually just gonna go for the full meter because I figure why not give it the extra strength. So I'm gonna mark it at one meter. So now all we need to do 
is just get the rope, feed it through the thimble, just like that, until we have our mark on the other side of the thimble there. So our mark's right here. And then we're virtually just gonna go into the rope and down through there. So just like last time, we need to grab our fencing wire. I'm gonna go about here. And then just like last time, just put the fencing wire in and then just slowly feed it through. So we want the rope to roughly go in about here. So I'm just gonna open it up and find the bit of fencing wire. Should be somewhere around there. There it is, awesome. So now all we need to do is just attach the end of the rope to here with tape just like we did last time. And then we just need to feed it in. And now we just pull on the end of the fencing wire. All right, so I'm just gonna have a look to see how that's gonna work out. Yep, that looks pretty good. Just enough slack in there so it's not gonna rub. That should be pretty good. So now all we need to do is just milk this down. So that's looking pretty good there. Nice little gap there, but not too much. So I'm just gonna milk this down. And the tail is just gonna disappear into the Dyneema. Now you guys know how to splice two pieces of Dyneema rope together, or how to splice the eye thimble at the end of your winch rope. Now just remember guys, both of the splices that I showed you today need stitching in order to make them a permanent solution. You can use it temporarily to get you out of the situation, but if you don't put stitching in it, when there's no load or very low load on the winch rope, it can just pull itself out just like that and then it becomes dangerous. So great thing to get you home, but either replace your winch rope or learn how to do the stitching. There's quite a few websites and videos about how to do it. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys learned something in this video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in a different one. See ya. I tell you guys what, this feels so wrong cutting through Dyneema. This stuff is so expensive. Man, I've cut through so much of this rope. Like there is barely anything holding it. So it should snap this time, I hope. Just seriously, this stuff is ridiculous. Okay, round four. Seek adventure.